I need the communication from our egg marketing team. Like, what are we selling? What do we need to look at? Like, uh, we have a <clears throat> we have a couple houses that are doing like Omega enhanced diet. So I need to know what level we need to reach at so I can formulate. You know, added flax products for that. Uh, whether or not it's organic or conventional. By conventional, I mean it's all vegetarian fed because we are certified humane. So that's another thing we you have to think about is like what certifications are you trying to reach, what you can and you cannot use uh, based on the label. So a lot of it's like I need feedback on what our end goal is, and then I kind of do the basic diet and do any adjustments on that from there. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. Uh, my name is Sam Rochel. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show uh, and joined today by a colleague I've known really since graduate school, uh, Dr. Chris Rude. So we've uh, never really worked directly together, but have, have been in the same circles for, for several years now and uh, look forward to talking with you today, Chris. So Good to see you too, Sam. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. So uh, <clears throat> you had a pretty interesting career. So you've moved around uh, different species and, and gotten exposure to a lot of different uh, production systems. And now you're really kind of focused on, uh, you know, specialty egg production, specialized egg layers. So uh, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, your current role and, and, and what you're doing with that? Yeah, currently I'm the poultry nutritionist for Pete and Jerry's Organics is technically our name, but we do do non-organic and organic uh, production. Everything we do is, I like to say, has to go outside. So we're all free range, you know, relatively small houses. And then pasture is kind of our focus for growth in the next few years, from what I'm being told. I don't mind in all those discussions. So like we were very much in that specialty egg category. And uh, obviously that brings a different set of circumstances where we have systems where everything is a little bit more defined and, and uniform. So uh, yeah, interesting to hear how you handle that. Um, so, you know, anytime we talk about, you know, different uh, specialty eggs, there's different, you know, marketing categories, and, and that might bring about different formulation uh, approaches. Can you talk a little bit about some of those categories and how you formulate differently? Yeah, a lot of it is uh, like I need the communication from our egg marketing team. Like, what are we selling? What do we need to look at? Like, uh, we have a <clears throat> we have a couple houses that are doing like Omega enhanced diet. So I need to know what level we need to reach at so I can formulate, you know, added flax products for that. Uh, whether or not it's organic or conventional. By conventional, I mean it's all vegetarian fed because we are certified humane. So that's another thing we you have to think about is like, what certifications are you trying to reach, what you can and you cannot use uh, based on the label. So a lot of it's like, I need feedback on what our end goal is. And then I kind of do the basic diet and do any adjustments on that from there. Yeah, that makes sense. And and so what are kind of some of the key things that you're you're really looking at? I mean, is it ultimately the in specs or the ingredients to get to those specs or a combination of both? It's a combination of both. So like especially in specialty eggs, the yolk color tends to be a big focus uh, because even though it's easiest to change it in a white cage setting, people expect different yolk colors for different categories. Typically, the more they pay for the egg, the darker the yolk. Um, but we have found out they do not like reddish orange eggs. Okay. <laughs> we got yeah. a lot of complaints when we overshot for a little bit. Uh, that was kind of when I first started. There was a farm where we were definitely too high. Uh, so that's I spend some time focusing on that. And that gets kind of hard because it's not necessarily a science. You're kind of playing it's more of an art form to try to, a little bit of both, to try to blend the red and the yellow to get the desired result. And you're always kind of three to four weeks behind the what's going in the feed. So you have to kind of make changes slowly. So that way you don't overcorrect either way. Very interesting. So would you say, uh, you know, obviously a lot of times uh, specialty eggs are, are not, you know, white eggs. Um, do you, do you think that consumers, so I would say exterior color or interior color is a bigger driver on, 
uh, purchasing decisions for specialty eggs? Uh, well, they, they basically every special egg has to come from a brown layer sure. in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. There's nice. uh, my previous life at Devonish, we did do some non-GMO diets for a customer for white, which is very what I still would consider a special egg. So they're all like they're all brown birds. It's just where the market started, and that's kind of where we're all at. Uh, and then egg, egg color on the outside is actually very important. Um, so you have to have enough, like we've had some birds get anemic due to foul mites and that affects the egg color. So that's one of the things on my radar. The interesting thing is, is when birds go outside and expose to more sunlight in pasture settings, the sh outside shell color tends to get lighter for whatever reason. So it's kind of contradictory to what the consumer may think should happen. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I know, you know, traditionally, like we think about coccidiosis really impacting pigmentation and impacting, you know, yolk color. Uh, I know from a health standpoint, that's probably a big one. I never really thought so much about the, you know, manipulating through management, either through the health or the nutrition or the, the, the management of the exterior egg color. Uh, so that's interesting. Yeah, it's, I can't, do, I mean, if I don't give them enough, it'll change it. But like, I can't take like, I, if they're going to lay lighter, I can't make it darker. That's so very genetic. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Good. So, I mean, w what are some of the key, you know, focus areas that you have on, on, on formulating these different diets? I mean, um, you know, obviously production is, is always going to be important in feed costs, but I mean, is is that as big of an emphasis uh, or is it more of just, you know, reaching your, your key targets for those marketing categories? It, it's definitely production is number one focus because if we don't, if we don't get the eggs, it doesn't matter. We can't sell them if we don't have them. Uh, egg size right now has been a big one. <clears throat> Some of that has to do with brown genetics or for whatever reason, or they want to lay a bigger egg than what necessarily we want. So like you have to try to get as many eggs with still maintaining the smaller egg size. Uh, and then it, then it becomes when you get to the nitty gritty, it's like organic standards and how you manage the methionine level. Do you do life of flock or do you do just a set two pounds per ton maximum? And then there's some strategies on how to do that. Um, I do like life of flock, so I, it requires a lot more work. It's a lot easier for me to do being in-house versus out-of-house. And then on the conventional side, some of it, like some pasture, I've played around with adding a little extra energy from time to time because depending on the farm, some of them are out in the pasture a lot and some of them aren't. So maybe the activity level can kind of mean they may need more energy, but it doesn't necessarily go across the board. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <clears throat> as far as ingredients standpoint, I know this, just even the primary ingredients, right? You have to move out of just kind of a corn soy mindset. I mean, is, are there any ingredients that you've really uh, been surprised with as far as, Hey, I never thought I would try to feed this or, or something very interesting. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked to somebody about lobster meal because we have a large, group in the northeast it hasn't it's come and gone it hasn't shown up but that was a that was a surprise one was never expecting to do that uh haven't in, in previous lives i've i talked a lot about the insect meals i haven't heard much of that which is also surprising considering where we're located uh in the northeast and everything but uh so like nothing terribly surprising. The the thing is, is like when you start getting more specialty, sometimes you get less ingredients. So your focus on like soybean meal quality and corn quality goes up when you can't blend in other things that kind of, you know, kind of lessen the effects. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. True. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, very good. What other surprises have you, have you, you know, kind of uh, gotten your feet under you under this role of a specialty egg formulation? I mean, what are some of the, the I'd say, the biggest surprises to you in, in these types of systems? 
Uh, so it's just the the lack of influence on birth health of being outside kind of has on them. We do see some worms, but like coxie isn't a huge as big of a thing as you'd think because uh, the the ground tends to be dry. The big one for us is like spotty liver disease because they go out and drink all the mud puddles that sh- show up. Which again, when I start focusing on yolk scores, like we can have like terrible yolk scores. Well, it's because they all have spotty liver and their livers are no longer functioning like they should. So it's a little bit, but like spotty livers probably surprised me the most. And then um, it may have general other diseases that have gone through like pneumovirus and some things that kind of hit, I don't know, the white birds, but the brown birds across the and the turkeys has been kind of challenging. Yeah. Uh, all things that, you know, it's really hard to prepare for in grad school, things that you can really never see on the radar, but uh, it's awesome you're, you're out there learning. So I really appreciate your insight on it. Guys, for having me. But. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap up. Uh, great talking with you, Dr. Rude. And uh, thanks to all of you for, for joining in on another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt uh, Podcast. Uh, If you enjoyed this episode, please uh, like and subscribe so you can uh, catch the next one and we will see you then. Thank you.